All right, welcome back. So what I'm gonna talk about today is pie hole and why I am not gonna be using it. I've been using it for a while, like two years, and I've had lots of problems with it. I have my, well, I have one of them pulled up. As you can see, I've had like nothing going through it because I've switched over, I've switched over a while ago. But uh, a big issue I have is the memory usage unless you put it on like a VM or something with enough memory, it will drop requests all the time. And even if you have enough memory, I've noticed, I just always drop requests unless I have a backup one and then it seems like your internet goes out. And if you're using the router and you're setting the DHCP and you're setting it to go through your pie hole, if this goes down, your internet's down. So can't resolve domains you can't go anywhere so i did not like this because it's kind of a pain you have to set up a backup one then you're like okay how do i replicate records so i have to go into the dashboard each time in both of them update the record in both spots you spend a lot of extra time doing that then i have started using terraform which i think that's a great aspect of the pie holes it has a terraform provider and you can easily deploy to both pie holes at the same time. So that solves that problem. But unless I had the backups going and if something happened, like they just go down. So I've been looking at Technidium DNS, which is a production ready DNS server. And it is a lot more featured than pie hole. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, but what I really like is it has built-in replication. So you can create a thing called a catalog zone and replicate it to however many of these you set up. So I really like this a lot more. I do a lot of stuff at my job with AWS. So it's kind of cool you can create the zones. You can see I have a bunch of them in here. Oops, I gotta log in again. So yeah, you can see like everything that's connected. It can still do the ad blocking and everything. So you can import your lists here. You can do everything Pihole does, but more. Um, also, I have played around with the Pihole API. So hard to use. I, I figured it out, but it took me a long time just to even learn how to use the Pihole API. This API is a lot easier to use, but they don't have a Terraform provider. So that might be a future project I'll look into. Make it a custom provider for it maybe um also with pihole you only have a and c name records this they support everything so like we'll just add a record here you know they support all these different record types and then in the settings um they have all kinds of other things like you can do a socks 5 proxy you can set up where it's forwarding to you can forward over all these different protocols so a lot more fully featured. It's a production ready DNS server and we're gonna set it up. So I am going to set up a new one. I have a Raspberry Pi over here. And let me get to TDNS, there we go. So I've kind of copied these files over and then I'm gonna walk through them. And we're gonna get it set up and then we will set it up to sync to the zone and I'll show you guys how to set up a new catalog zone. So let's get into it. So to start off, I'm gonna just show you the Docker Compose here cause it's a little easier to look at. So essentially I've made a proxy network. I do that in all my videos. It doesn't really mean anything other than it's just a Docker network. So all these containers can talk to each other. Um, I do have a little example here. So basically they're gonna be on the same network and they can discover each other. So that way in case anything needs to call the API or whatever you wanna do, I just like to do that. And then we're gonna open up these ports. So there's some comments next to which each one is. So this is for just the HTTP console. And then we're gonna open up port 53 so we can use, that's just the default DNS port. So that way you don't have to change anything. And you can set the server domain, which you can do to anything. So I'm just gonna set mine to TDNS. And then we're gonna put the pa the admin password in this password.txt file, which just has password. 
we'll update it after. And then you don't need to change this at all. This should be good to go. We're gonna allow recursion. And then I set mine up to Cloudflare. Feel free to set that up to wherever you want. Up to you. And then I create a Docker volume just for the data. So that way you don't have to keep this password updated. You can go and use the UI after. And then we're gonna give it a restart policy. And then this is just if you want to use the DHCP, I believe on it, which I'm not, but I just left that in there. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. And then we have labels. I did update these to match the ones I want. So these are just for traffic, completely optional. So you don't even have to worry about that. So we'll look at the Docker Compose. You can see I just changed the label right here. And then that's about it. So that's all we're going to do. So we're going to run sudo docker compose up. And I like to just run up first before I start it in background mode so I can watch logs. And then that way, I, I, it's really helpful when you're trying to deploy for the first time and get it working to not just always start it with dash D in the background mode. So that's what I do. And then we're going to let this pull. And it is going to fail. So it's going to say port 53 already in use. So I am doing this on Ubuntu. So all we need to do is we need to edit our Etsy systemd and then it's the resolve.conf. And then we're going to go down here to stub listener. and change that to no. And then we're gonna run it up again. Oh, oops, I have to just do oh, systemd-resolves.service. So this will reset and then now we should be able to run it. Oh, you know what? We're just going to reboot. Let's wait for that to reboot up. And it is really important, I just want to say, that you have pulled the container before you do this. Because if you do this afterwards and try to pull it after you restart that, um, what will happen is it won't be able to resolve domain names and you'll just won't be able to the container it'll just time out so we're gonna cd in the tdns see if we can pull it now there we go so now it's working and then we can go here so let's go to the ip address 10.10.4.7 Colon 5380, and we have it. So now the user is going to be admin, and then in this file, you know, we set password. So we'll go in, and then the first thing we're going to do is go here, and we're going to change the password. So we got that. And then what I like to do is go to administration, users, and then you can add a new user. We're going to add them. And then what you need to do is go to this user. And then we need to add them to the admin group. And then now they're an admin. So that is good to go. And then, so now what we need to do is we want to build a catalog zone. So let's go over here. So say this is our primary one. And now this is our, our the one we just set up as our backup. So on the primary one, same, same things have happened. We've just set up the new user. We changed the password of the admin account. And then, so now we're going to go to zones. And let's add a zone. And then we're going to do a catalog zone. And then do it for whatever you want. So for this one, let's do uh, 
Let's just call it service.home. That's what we're gonna, as like our domain name, right? So that's the zone we're making. And then what we need to do now is we're gonna create a key. So go to settings, TSIG. Let's add a new key and we're just gonna call it home. And we're gonna hit save. And then this is gonna generate a key and we need to do this on this other one. And we need to do it the exact same. So we're gonna go to settings, TSIG, add, home. And then you're gonna come here, copy that, paste it in here and hit save. So now we have the same key, exactly the same, same algorithm, same name, same secret. And what we're gonna do now is go to our catalog zone that we made. So home and go to zone options. And then for zone transfer, we're gonna go down here to the key names and we're gonna add the home key. And in the zone options, you can also do allow here for zone transfer. And if you wanted to specify specifically the IP address, like that you could, I'm just gonna allow because that's my private network, so not a big deal. And then we're going to allow everyone to query it. So now we have the zone set up. And then so what we're gonna do here on our backup one, let's make a new zone. So we're gonna call it service.home secondary catalog zone. I believe it's 10.10.60.60. Let me check that real quick. Yep. So this is the IP address of my main one. And then we're gonna select the home TSIG key and add it. And then you're gonna hit that refresh button and then you can see it's synced everything from this other zone. And then so now what we can do is say I want to add this one to that, to that uh, catalog zone. I'll go into the zone I have, you know, we'll, we'll make a new one here. So let's make a new zone. We'll make a primary zone. And we'll say it's service.homelab. Also, I don't think the zone catalog zone domain name really matters very much. And then we can set it to a catalog zone and we can register it to it. So let's register it to service.home and add it. And then now let's just make a demo record. Let's just do pi 10.10.4.7. Save it. And then over here, sir, uh, let's see. I think we hit resync. Service.homelab, so now it's popped up. And we can see that pi, 10.10.4.7. So now if I go to pi.service.homelab, colon 5380, oops. There we go. And then here's that zone. So we're in that same one is over here. So it's successfully replicated. And you can go to your DHCP settings, networks, lab, show options. And then so you can see I'm using the primary one, but then you could add your backup you know, right here. And then what this will do is anytime a new client connects and gets a DHCP address and it generates an IP for it, it will set these as the name servers, which I don't need to do that right now. Um, and when it does that, it will distribute it out. So like if you have a, if you already have some uh, devices connected, you can just go reboot the device and it'll get the new uh, DNS server. So. That is 
pretty much how you can do this. Um, I do have, here, I'll look at the. So on my doc site, you can go to docs, oops. And then in local cloud, I have private DNS. So it'll have some links to the documentation. I have this install guide that you can go through. It's gonna do all the steps that we just did. And then I have a separate one for syncing records. So the first one is setting up just the primary. This would be you deploy a backup and then you do everything that we just did and you can sync the records to it. I also go over how to do the access control list and everything. So TSIG key. So have fun with this one. I like this a lot more than Pi-hole. I've been running it for a while and I have had zero issues. So do with that what you will. Thanks everyone. This was a really good project. Um, let me know if you guys like this, if you're already using Technidium, if you're having issues with Pi-hole, give this one a try. I run them both in Docker, so they're just as easy to set up. Let me know what you guys think, and in the future, send me some requests for other services you'd like to see. All right, thanks everyone.